Welcome to Real to Real Outdoors. Captain Adam here. We got a great episode for you today. Um, awesome captains. Can't wait for you to meet them. Uh, big thanks to Captain Chucks and to Ludington Beverage for their great sponsorship and making this all happen. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Help us out. We need some more subscribers. Uh, share all of, our, all of our posts and uh, like this video. Leave a comment if you like. We'd love to hear from you. So let's meet those captains. Hi, my name is Joel DeVries, boat fin scout from St. Joseph, Michigan. Hi, my name is Jeremy Barber. The boat name is Innuendo out of Grand Haven, Michigan. Hi, I'm Chris Poplinski with Pure Chaos Pro Fishing, and I am out of Onekimo, Michigan. All right, today's topic, we're going to talk about tournament strategies. Uh, all of these guys at this table have quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of tournament experience and uh, definitely some success uh sitting here so let's uh let's see what the what the pros have to say about tournament strategy you guys are all looking at me yeah <laughs> wow how did i get to start on this one <laughs> years has something to do with it yeah well you know hey what can we say so <laughs> so tournament strategy so it's a it's a very in, enjoyable part and i'm gonna adam if you don't mind i'm gonna embellish a little bit about tournament fishing in general yeah you know and 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 talk about the fact that um you know, why don't you tournament fish? And you meaning anybody who fishes but doesn't really think that they can or should tournament fish. Um, besides the fact that uh, everybody at this table here I have met only because of tournament fishing yeah. mm -hmm. and, and have established, you know, some really cool friendships um, and communication with these guys throughout the year, mm -hmm. you know, because of a tournament fishing. And and there's many more guys like this here who we've met over the years because of tournament fishing. The the camaraderie, the friendships you make, um, the fun times that you have, the memories that you create from tournament fishing um, is pretty unique. And I'm not sure you could do it besides tournament fishing. So let's just start out with that. Um, but you know, from a strategy standpoint. Uh, you know, we, my particular boat this year, we haven't fished now in about, about three or four weeks. Um, and we're here early. Um, we're here today. Uh, our whole goal today was to just run some lures, get a feel for the boat again, and honestly, um, try to catch a couple fish. Um, and from that, what we try to do is build a program. Uh, so we come to a port, um, and we pre-fish at least a couple days. Um, we work um, towards starting on day one. Um, building a couple, maybe a couple lures that we can take with us in the day two, um, maybe a location that we can take in the day two. Um, and then day two, we really focus on trying to create a tournament day um, where on day two or the day before the actual tournament starts, um, we really um, work on trying to create a tournament day one in our last pre-fish day. Um, so that's one of the strategies that we work on is get, get, getting serious right before we need to be serious, right? Um, but, you know, part of that tournament fishing strategy also is when you come to a port, um, maybe making a communication uh, with a, uh, some local charter boats. Maybe you know them, maybe you don't. Um, maybe walking the dock and talking to some guys who are fishing in that port that have some experience. Um, somebody you can talk to, say hello, introduce yourself, um, maybe creates and, and gather some information while you're there about uh, maybe even simple as where they've been fishing and maybe what they've caught, not necessarily the bait or, or the speed or any of the details, but just get a general idea of where fish is being caught, you know, in that port um, and who's catching them. Um, and then um, maybe build a relationship or a friendship at that point um, to get, gather some information. So network is part of, of coming to the town um, or location that you're going to fish in as well. So we'll, we'll call people or, or speak to people or introduce ourselves to people who we don't know. Um, and, and try to get some information um, about what's happening there in that community, you know, for fishing. Um, and, you know, then from there we'll go, we'll pick a location, and we'll start again to build a program, whether it be um, a location, uh, maybe a lure or two that works, um, you know, speed, a troll, and then anticipate looking forward. What's happening with the weather forecast? Um, is it going to be cloudy? Is it going to be sunny? Which way is the wind going to blow? And then typically, obviously, if it's... Uh, if it's a wind that's favorable to the location, anticipate where the fish movement might be and build your tournament plan. Or do you have a location uh, that you're fishing in that you can still fish throughout the tournament? 
Um, or is the wind going to knock you out or not allow you to fish in that location for the entire time that you're there? So those, I guess, are some highlights that where we would start. Yeah. You know, when we come to create a strategy for a tournament. Well, and, and I think the, the the last part that you, you noted on the, with the wind and always remembering you have to get back from wherever you go. Yes. Uh, and, you know, if the wind's going to blow hard out of the north, you might not want to run 20 miles south. Just, uh, just I've been there. It's miserable well, getting last home. Last year I was there too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's a really good thing. Uh, let me just interject a little bit. Um, I don't fish a lot of tournaments. Um, we are full-time charter service in Ludington, and we're running, you know, 80-plus trips a year and we're busy and we're fishing and we're trying to catch fish for customers which is totally different so my concept like going into tournament week for us we're going to fish our local tournament is i have to stop thinking like it's a charter you know and it's really about figuring out size class of fish um when those fish are biting how i can target those fish specifically Instead of saying, I want to get 20 bites today, saying, I want to get 14 and 12 of them be the right bites. Yep. You know, th mm -hmm. so that's a lot of uh, strategy that we use. But, you know, Chris is, we text all the time during tournaments. You know, he, he didn't fish for a little while while his family was starting. And then, you know, obviously mm -hmm. sold his boat and didn't get his new boat yet last year. But, you know, over and over, I don't know how many times. In, in the text, it says you can't win day one. Correct. But you can lose. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and what they mean by that is your number one goal day one is to catch all of the fish you're allowed to weigh mm -hmm. and weigh all of the number of fish you're allowed to weigh. So if you're in Ludington, you're allowed to weigh 12, uh, nine of one species. You have to weigh 12 day one. Yep. Or as close as you can get. And, and then obviously bigger fish is better. But way you, you got to weigh 12 yep. mm -hmm. and however it is. And, and you're like a, if you watch Chris's tournament history, I mean, there's a lot of times where you catch 12 the first day and they're not the right size, mm -hmm. but day two, you catch 12 again and they're bigger mm -hmm. and somebody catches nine who right. caught 12 the first day and they're, that's 30 pounds that they just gave up Yep, because it's 10 points for every fish. So got to catch your fish. Yep. 100%. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to what we've talked about over and over and over again is if you want a tournament fish, um, I mean, tournament fishing is like organized sports. Like you can go shoot hoops or you can play in a little league. You know, if you play in the league, it'll make you better at shooting hoops because you want to, it gives you a goal. Mm -hmm. And I think you use it, you know, don't go into a tournament like, well, I'm not going to win. I don't want to fish it. Mm -mm. You know, go into a tournament like, you know, let's see if we can catch all our fish this time. And, right. and let's see, mm -hmm. you know, if you fish amateur and you catch all your fish both days, you're in the top 10. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. almost every tournament you're in the top 10. Mm -hmm. So, you know, use it as a like a stepping stone or a learning curve. And, and there's a lot of guys that fish these tournaments and very willing to talk to people and yep. mm -hmm. share, you know, share their knowledge and, mm -hmm. and little tips and tricks. And I mean, that's how you get better. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you can't spend a ton of time on the water, but if you want to be good at tournament fishing, you have to be a di diverse in your fishery and you have to be able to catch multiple species and you have to be able to understand, you know, where to target those fish. And, and sometimes you can't, I mean, look how many tournaments, in the last three years where the boat that won didn't catch all their fish both days. Mm -hmm. Happens it's, a lot. It happens yeah. a lot. A lot yeah. So you're never out, but if you catch all your fish, you're in. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have no matter what your weight is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the, the hardest thing to avoid to, you know, to, to avoid is trying to hit a home run on the first day. And I think some people are really, really good at just catching their fish on day one. Like this guy. <laughs> I think Joel, I mean, you've, you've proven it over and over again, and I've fished against you for a lot of years now, and you routinely catch your fish, and you're always in the hunt because you caught your fish. You might not have caught giants, but you caught your fish day one. And then day two, you go out and win. Um, so you're trying to hit a, hit a home run on day one, and you strike out your, your hose for the, for the weekend. Yep. 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 
And how many times me and you have this conversation, Joel? Or like, how many fish per hour do we need? Well, we do break it down like we that. Break it down, we, yeah. we do, and we have to break it down because how, yep. how much time do you stay at one spot to where how much do you go maybe offshore, deep water trouting like we talked about earlier, or, yep. you know, what move do you make? You almost have to break it down. To, yeah, and it helps you determine actually if you need to make a move because you're either ahead or behind in your catch rate that you need to achieve. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the Hail Marys at the end are becoming slimmer and slimmer, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think the biggest thing for me is the – the need to be very meticulous. That's one thing that we do. Mm -hmm. We're, we're super meticulous about everything when it comes to tournament fishing, meaning that we're very consistent. All of our leader links are the same. Our leaders are checked every single day. You know, we're, we're just constantly making sure that all the gear is in top shape. Number yep. one, yep. the premature tackle failure is the absolute worst. If your yep. tackle fails yep. and yep. you lose because of it, that is, that is the thing that hurts oh, it's terrible. the most. You can lose a fish. You did everything mm -hmm. right. But if you lose a fish because you were, you know, you didn't check leaders or you didn't, or you, whatever you did that, that you could have changed, you kick yourself for a long time afterwards. You do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Control what you can control. Yeah. yeah. Take out the variables. I think that's a, that's a big key. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we do is we take very meticulous notes when we're out pre-fishing, we're writing down times, we're writing down GPS coordinates, we're writing down baits, we're writing down water temperature, wind direction, mm -hmm. you know, what we caught, what it weighed. I mean, we take a lot of notes when we're pre-fishing that helps. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we do the same thing. You know, the I think that the more information, and it, we were talking about it actually right before we started this little session here. The more information you write down, whether or not you ever read it again, it made you think of all of that information when right. you wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And it, it just it sits in your memory. And, you know, if you see, like today, I'm on a 265 troll. Every time I was on a 265 troll, I hit a fish. Mm -hmm. So my boat was on a 265 troll for a long time, and that that was the difference. Right. You know, Joel mm -hmm. Joel was right there with with us, um, and he wasn't you know on the same troll. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the troll is very important, and you'll see a lot of patterns there, and you'll see a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of things there. Um, I think that you know talking with other people is is always good. Sharing information, being honest with each other is is good. You know. Some people say they're not having a great day, and they are, and, and they don't share that information with you. But you know, you just remember that for yeah. the next time. Yeah. That you talk to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Was there guilt there, Chris? Wow. No, not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, you know, you have to have a network of people yeah. that you that you believe in. Yeah. And if you're an amateur boat though, and and you, a lot of pro boats are very willing to talk to amateur boats. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't broadcast the information. Mm -hmm. um, that'll get you off the list of people. But um, I talk to more amateur boats in a tournament than I do pro boats because yeah. I'm not fishing against them. Right. Yeah. And, and they're, they're going to help us out just as much as we need. Yeah. To help. Yep. It, 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 it goes both ways pretty quick. It absolutely does. Mm -hmm. Yep. So as an amateur guy, like, talk to these guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are in a lot of the ports and they're very happy to talk to you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's oh yeah. You can't do it by yourself. I think that's mm -hmm. another aspect of that camaraderie and friendship. Yeah. You know, you start guys call you, you don't you've never met, they call you and you know, ask for advice or your opinion or help and you help them out and then all of a sudden you you know, you talk throughout the year, you become friends with them. I mean, yeah. right. You know, Joe and I have become almost best friends over this, you know. I mean, we just you know, it's it's been really fun. We have a lot of fun together, and it all started with a stupid phone call. You know, I mean, yeah, I mean that's just how it works, though. You know, your you know, some of your best friends will come this way. You yeah, know, reach out. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, it, it is great. Well, like I didn't meet you till end of last year, right? When you're in your new boat, yeah, yeah. And now we text what once, twice a week, probably. Yeah. Wow. Less or more. Wow. <laughs> I wonder how many texts. Chris sends in one week. Oh, it's a lot. I don't know. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, but I'm not getting that many texts. Do you think it's like yeah. auto? Like, like he programmed it so yeah. it just well, sends actually, them out. I copy and paste both. You oh, okay. Guys, so it makes it easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's fun though. I think with you know with tournaments going to a new port, it's it's fun. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, I I enjoy going other places and fishing. Um, it it's hard for me. My business that I have done for the last 20 years is, is kept my weekends pretty busy. Uh, so it's really hard for me to take weekends off. And, but when I do and I get to go somewhere and fish, I mean, that's how I met him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 15 years ago, probably. 
And, uh, don't act like you remember. No, I don't. But <laughs> you know, we were we were fishing a lot of tournaments back then, and, and it was a lot of fun. And and uh, I met a lot of uh, guys that I'm still friends with. You know, just from that. And and Joel, the only reason Joel and I ever met was the the big boys. What, Four years ago, whatever the first one was, yeah, and uh, and he came into town and and, uh, and won the big boy the first year, and I was like, well, I'm gonna have to meet this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up being a pretty awesome guy, you know. I mean, we yeah. talk on a regular basis, and, and uh, but there's, you know, I think a lot of people are intimidated. Yeah, that's, to, that's a good do word. It. And I, yeah, you yeah. you have to you have to ask and challenge people to say, why, why really are you intimidated? Because you're missing out on a lot of great things yeah. that you get to experience when you do come to a tournament, whether any port, but besides, you know, the, the different style of fishing, different, different port location, different activities at the port that you go to different people you get to meet at every port, uh, people that travel throughout the port, you get to meet as well. So you, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of dynamics to the tournament fishing world that shouldn't be intimidating. You know, you should you should actually experience that because it's probably one of one of the unique experiences you get to exp- have while you own a boat and while you fish. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna just pull us right back into in, into uh, strategy. Strategy. Yeah. So, I mean, on our boat, our strategy is first thing in the morning always try to get a try to get a silver bite because you can't buy the 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 cheapest silver bites happen in the first, first hour. Hour. Yep. And if you can hit a silverfish in the first hour, you know that's what, that you have to you have to try. Those are your kicker fish. Those are, yeah. Um, that being said, you know the last couple of years we had so much we had enough confidence, I should say, in our silver fish fishing later in the day that we knew that our lake trout we needed those nine fish in a hurry, yep. and we would actually run for the first hour and, and never fish and. You know, it worked for us. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it would work this year. You know, you have to keep reevaluating what you're doing. But that first hour, you have to focus on kings. Kings weigh more than any other fish that you're going to catch. Um, you know, a two-year-old king is going to weigh more than a, a six-year-old lake trout. So, correct. It, it, king, king, king. If they're around, you have to catch them. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're not around you have to get 12 or you have to get 10 or five or whatever your number is. You have to catch them all. So however you come up with in your mind that you can catch those fish in the biggest ones possible, that's what that, that's your goal. But that being said, if you're running offshore and you're going to catch, you know, five steelhead and lake trout and cohos, and you're going to weigh those and somebody else weighs five Kings, you lost mm-hmm. yep. every time, even if they're not mature Kings, you lost. Mm-hmm. So the king has to be your focus. If it's not around, which is common mm-hmm. nowadays, you know, you have to get your numbers. Mm-hmm. A, a one pound fish is worth eleven points. Eleven points, yeah. Yeah. So every time you give up one fish, you're giving up eleven pounds. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. tough. It is tough. So, is there any uh, questions from our audience here? So my question is for us to, uh, on the amateur side of the house, what would you give as the top three to five strategies for to prep us for game day for that first day of that tournament? What do we need to know? That's a, that's a good question. I think there's a lot of ways to go with it, but I'm pretty sure that this Bud Light Seltzer is going to help me answer that question. We'll figure so out let's just, those are really good. Fantastic! Mm-hmm. Make sure you try those out. That's a that's a great just pretty middle good. of the day, sunny day, hot hot sunny, yeah. offshore flies aren't biting, <laughs> no wind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fantasy <Unicorn>. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, I'll give I'll give uh, my first or my, my my number one recommendation would be all of your gear is prepared, like Jeremy mm-hmm. said. Um, if you're in a tournament, how much money would you pay for one bite? So if you're going to pay that much money for the bite, don't you think that your line should be checked, your leader should be checked, your swivel should be checked, everything, you know. Look sharp. You don't want to lose your bites. When I fish a tournament, if I need to catch 12 fish for a tournament, I'm trying to get 12 bites. Mm-hmm. And, and I have confidence that our equipment won't fail. 
So, I mean, that's really important that you go through your stuff. If your line's been on your rigger for seven years and you think it's good, change it. Mono's cheap. Mm-hmm. I tell people that all the time. Mono's cheap. You get a tangle, mono's cheap. Cut the mono. Mm-hmm. Get it out of the way. Retie it. Mm-hmm. And knowing your knots and being able to reconfigure your equipment quickly mm-hmm. um, is important as well. But it's all that, all of that being said, make sure your equipment's 100% ready. Yep. Yep. How about organization too, Adam? Do you, yep. do you know where your lures are? Do you know where your spoons are, where your, where your mm-hmm. swivels are, where your flies are? Have you, have you tied additional liters of flies, trout rigs, meat rigs that are ready to go in advance yep. um, that you can easily switch and change and, and move to bait selection two if bait selection one doesn't work? So are you organized enough that uh, you can go through your boat quickly um, mm-hmm. and, and make the changes, you know, as you need to make them? And you said meat rigs, um, you know, make when you put a meat rig away, run, run your fingers on the mono. If it's chafed or, you know, retie it mm-hmm. like yeah. that, it will fail. Yeah. And we I'm, have a zip line and, and, and you don't yeah. normally things don't break off on small fish. Correct. So that's well, a big thing, too. And it's the ones you need. Yeah, it's the ones that's you need. That's the bite you need. Yeah. And that's when it happens. Every one of mine is stored like this with a little bit of pipe insulation, and it keeps them really nice, and I'm just constantly checking them. And everything is, I'm just like, super, I'm super meticulous about the way things are organized. Uh, I know exactly where to find something if I need it very quickly, and sometimes that happens. You know, you, you have a rig that's going and going and going, and then you break it off, or the king bites the head off of it, or it gets chafed, and you need another one right now. Mm-hmm get it back down you got to be able to find it and it's got to be in good working order if you have a pile of spinnies in a box it's all tangled up it will be a disaster when you need it in a hurry so being very neat having things organized you know we'll 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 catch you more fish yeah for sure and to kind of tangent off that a little bit i mean i've been on a couple of boats i don't have hot boxes i'm oh, a yeah. huge believer in hot boxes mm-hmm. i mean I, i've been on boats where they said oh i caught fish on this this and this and they open a box and they're trying to remember what was in yeah. you know a normal box to where if we just take and i know joel does the same thing and you do the same thing you have the one box and that's what was on there the day before yeah. because there could be like he just showed one meat rig that was working good and you know that one whether it's a liter length yeah. or and you're and you're talking about a specific one not specific. not kevin's girlfriend with no, green mile that yeah. the one. kevin's girlfriend with green mile that caught all the fish and that one and then you put it in with three other ones. And that's your you tournament, your tournament box, your yep. tournament fish. That yeah. one that's been catching those fish because it it does make a difference. I don't know if it's juju or yeah, no it confidence. Totally makes a difference. It yeah. makes there's, a total there's difference. There's something about it. Spoons too, same thing, right? Yeah, I yep. mean spoons. Well, you get was it bent? Was it bad? Yeah. yeah. So it, it it seems like the chewed up ones go more than yeah. the than the not chewed up ones a lot of times. It's because they just have a different action. I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I th- or they're half silver. Yeah. And there's only partial. Yeah. On them. yeah. I mean, I had that today. Actually, same thing. Nope. So I think those are pretty good. Uh, I, I mean, be detailed, be organized, mm-hmm. yep. pay attention to a lot of details, take a lot of notes. Um, if you can't remember your, take a piece of paper and put your your spread out. So you know, my three color has a double orange crush stinger. My uh, seven color has a Rasta Goose. Mm-hmm. You, you know, Dreamweaver SS. Lay, lay it out on a piece of paper. Label what it is. Take a picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you get a bite on your, you know, on your port side and it's your low diver and you're like, oh, well, that's got to be, you know, a, a black, mm-hmm. black slick with a uh, UV on ice because it's on my, you know, you have a picture. I mean, it's pretty amazing to have the camera. You don't have to remember a lot anymore. You just have to take the notes or the pictures or whatever it takes. Right. So to know. I, I do that a lot. Actually, I take a lot of pictures. Um, and I like if I have a rig that's good, I'll actually measure the leader length. Right, I write it on the blade of the rotator, like on the fin. I write the leader length if it's like, if, especially trout fishing. I use a sharpie and I just write 32 inches or 36 on there, so I know and take a picture of it, so I know exactly what it is. So yep. I can recreate it if I bust it off. You have to retire, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think those are the details that people. Th- that make the difference because there's a lot of times you'll break something off and you'll put a new one on and maybe it was a little different or you know yeah. uh, one thing with us like if uh somebody sets the out and down and it goes 
Whoever set the Elton down sets it reset. again. Same thing. Absolutely. Same league. Because 32 feet to you is yep. different than to me when right. I'm looking in the water. You know, so it it's all about re recreating consistency through your program. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And the worst thing is you get that big king bite like on a 400 copper, and you bust it off, and you go, "What was on that 400?" And you don't know. Yeah. What would you put on it? Well, I don't know. What'd you put on it? And nobody knows. And in, in, in our boat, we basically have like one guy that runs this side and one guy that runs that side, and then he has like somebody that runs it with him, and that's how it all you know falls together. So there's hope. Hopefully, some somebody remembers. You know, I mean, the, but but it's set up that way. And we when we tournament fish, we're fishing this side against this side. I mean, we help each other, but. There's a little competition going that makes right. it makes it a little bit more, you know. Hey, uh, we, you know, we've had five bites over here. You guys gonna do something today? You know, the camaraderie's there. But my tournament teams, they're great. They're great guys. They all can run the boat. They all can do every job on the boat. And you don't get that a lot, you know. And I think that leads to it success to for us. Team, it, but it does. It takes yeah. time to build a, a team. And, but you're building friendships, and you got to have mm -hmm. people that. Uh, you have to have good personalities together. Yeah, and you can have a uh, a bad apple, and it wrecks the it wrecks the absolutely. Yeah, well, I was going to add to I think to answer your question, the other thing that we haven't really mentioned is it's about having fun. So absolutely. yes, mm -hmm. we are absolutely meticulous. Yes, we are serious, but we're always having a good time. We're always playing jokes on each other. We're always messing with each other. I mean, we have a really good time doing this, and I think that's the most important thing. It is. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. It's definitely uh, it, you're spending a weekend with some good friends and, mm -hmm. and family or, or whatever it is, and you know half of my tournament team's married to my sisters, so <laughs> you know, by design, I think. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah. So I, you know, if you're if you're on the fence about tournament fishing, I think there's a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. A lot of tournaments you can just fish in three three three. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you can just fish big fish like Ludington. You can come just fish big fish. Um, Ludington's done some cool things, which they probably stole from, uh, you know, Michigan City, where we have a whole week of tournaments here, and and we have a whole week of tournaments and probably some really good fishing normally around here, and uh, you know, so I encourage people look into the tournament trail, look into the, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, even some of the smaller, uh, you know, jo join a. Uh, it's not about salmon or ammo going on, right? Yeah, the salmon ammo, which is, about, and yeah. here we have the Big King Bonanza out of Ludington, mm -hmm. right? Um, where you just go fish, you just have a good time, you try and catch big fish and weigh them in, and yeah. it's just, I think that that element of competition drives you to become better, mm -hmm. for sure. And, and I've never seen anybody that was the best at what they did because they just wanted to be the best. There was no competition, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you do it because you want to. You know, I want to win every tournament I enter, so. Mm -hmm. But you know, even if I don't think I have the greatest chance, I'm I'm gonna push myself and I'm gonna try and absolutely try and get there. Yeah. So we just gotta beat Joel. We gotta beat Joel. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. That's all yeah. that matters. I got a GPS tracker on his boat now. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. Oh, did I give you the yeah. website? Yeah. All right. Got it. If you want that website, just click right here. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you Photoshop that? In yeah. <laughs> and here. No. Well, I I hope that uh you know you guys thinking about getting in a tournament. Try one out. Try one of the small ones. Yeah. Get in one of the side bet side of the tournament. Don't don't do it right away the, in the big tournament side if you're uncomfortable. But uh, you all have a chance. You know, get out there, push Absolutely. yourselves, yeah. pay attention to the details. I think that's the, the most key component to the mm -hmm. to being successful. So, until next time, tight lines to you guys, and uh, I hope we win this week. <laughs> We? All of us? What? No, what? I mean, oh, we? We're, oh, we're all tying? Oh, I said oh, we, didn't all I? All of us? We're all yeah, all of us. There's only three tournaments. 